You're watching The Chaos Protocol on Transplanar RPG, an all-transgender, people-of-color-led, dark fantasy TTRPG show set in an original, non-colonial, anti-orientalist multiverse. If you like what you see, please consider pledging to our Patreon to support the show and get access to a patron-only after-show, early podcast episodes, GM notes, character sheets, and even the chance for your tabletop OC to cameo in our series. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy! The Chaos Protocol is a dark fantasy series that may contain content that is triggering for some viewers. Content warnings for this episode include heights, falling, flying, darkness, pollution, environmental collapse, possession, romance, flirting, complex and complicated relationships, trauma, fire, immolation, and references to sexual entanglement, alcohol, and substances. Arc 1, Episode 16, Pulls Deep the Cut, from Self-Eulogy of a Martyr, by Connie Chong. The first thing Masu notices about the plunge is the refuse. A million tons of scrap compacted into ten square miles of floating debris that comprise the island's foundations. The plunge is made of rebar, ironwood, plastic, glass, fabric, horn, bone, anything and everything the settlement can get their hands on. Ten generations of resourceful jury rigging on the fringes of the Wild Sea have created an island where any salvage, no matter how rusted or broken or rotted, can be tacked onto its floating mass to sustain its junk-made half-life for just a little bit longer. The second thing Masu notices is the plunge itself. This Dense, ten-square-mile island is named after its most prominent geographical feature. A jagged, yawning fissure that plummets past the thrash, into the tangle, perhaps even into the sink, and a drown. Standing at the edge of the Dock of No Return, Maswu regards the plunge beneath him. It is a half mile long, but only a hundred feet wide, and interminable fathoms deep. The sun burns cheerfully above the king's head, but its golden rays reach only a hundred feet into the gulf, before the bristling shadows and thorn-spiked binds of the tangle obscure his vision. The edges of the plunge rustle with vegetation. Emerald leaves, sap smeared boughs. Beyond it, the verdancy extends for infinity. Somewhere out there, his lieutenant commander is soaring above the treetops with the rest of Masu's scouting party, looking for signs of the oil spill. But here, on the dock of no return, upon a scrap made island with its rugged denizens, Masu has a gut feeling that the answer is looming right beneath him. As soon as that feeling crosses his heart, his mind is made up and his body reacts. The King of the Raya tucks in his wings and dives headfirst into the plunge. The local guide behind him lets out a single startled yelp that is immediately swallowed by an ocean of branches, leaves, thorns, vines rushing past Maswu like crooked iron bark fingers. Within seconds, the light is gone and darkness presses around his freefall, the smell of pollen and sap and bittersweet crezzerin rushing past his face, his nose, his skin, his hair. Masu doesn't know what he'll find down here in this cold, sweet darkness, but he does know he needs to find it. For the Raya, for the Wild Sea, for his husband, his wife, his daughter. And Masu does. He finds it. But the thing about it, the thing about the darkness, the ash, the flame, the oil, is that it finds him back. King Masu Zahar, the descendant of strength, the scion of body, and the power of the skies, stands at the threshold of the western doors. 
A thick, dark mane of hair spills past muscled shoulders. The thin braids at his temples are disheveled. His beard is several days old and unkempt. His piercing dark eyes are sunken with deep bags, creasing his dark brown skin. His white robes are patterned with clouds and rays of sunlight, but there are deep wrinkles in the fabric like he's been sleeping in his clothes. The claws, extending from his feathered gauntlets, wink sharply in the light as King Maswu steps into the banquet hall. On cue, the band resumes playing, the attendees go back to mingling, and a crowd of magistrates, nobles, and attendants swarm the newly arrived king. At an imposing six foot seven, Maswu towers head and shoulders above this adoring crowd. His sharp, tired eyes look into the faces around him without truly seeing them. This is a king distracted, exhausted, haunted. And he keeps rubbing at the corner of his eye. The king is here. All you need now is Prin Him Su Hyun. The scion of mind hasn't arrived yet, so your party has a little bit of time to spend before your plan is properly set in motion. We sweep across this banquet hall now to find each of you at the base of your entrance. Starting with Zainan, as you see King Maswu enter, what do we find you doing amidst your party? What are you up to? Zainan is just taking it all in. He hasn't spent a lot of time on missions like this. He's not the person you think of when you think, I should send someone in for a diplomatic mission. But he can enjoy it while there is something to enjoy because the king is busy and the print is not here yet so he is um, idly kind of listening and looking and looking at who has arrived and seeing the bright colors and feathers uh, of the raya someone catches your eye it's not the print but it is someone who's quite tall basically as tall as the king, standing head and several shoulders over the crowd around them, you see Admiral Sahim Kubra. Medium brown skin, gold gorget, muscular linen sash, intricate belt, and a ceremonial empty quiver strung across their back. Of course, live weapons are not allowed in this banquet hall. They're surrounded by these adoring looking military officials as well as civilians and magistrates of all kinds of ranks. And as your eyes lock on this admiral who's supposed to be out on the open wild sea, but is right here in front of you, they turn and all six of their eyes lock on you as well. And they lift two of their forearms and they kind of quirk a finger at you in a kind of come hither motion as they continue to talk to the crowd around them. What do you do? Zainan slowly trying to be subtle about it begins to make his way over to them. Lumira, you're with Singh. Zainan's right there. He's sidling off. Do you let him go? Uh, yeah. Zainan's a grown-ass man. He can do what he wants. <laughs> but I'm also watching extremely intently. Like, mm. I think me and Singh are, like, leaned over close to each other. Like, what do you think? What do you think's, up? What do you think's going on? Like... Yeah, uh, Singh's eyes are, are glimmering as she watches Zainan go off. There's a little bit of a hope in them. And Zainan, as you leave, you hear Singh whisper at Lumira, Oh, you know, I hope Zainan finds what he's looking for. Speaking of strangely pertinent advice that he imparts during crucial moments, I've got high hopes for what's going to happen next with him. And I think we pan in towards Zainan approaching the Admiral. Uh, And the Admiral kind of excuses themselves very politely from this crowd of adoring fans and people who want to schmooze with the Admiral of the Wild Sea, uh, of the Raya. They step off and uh, off to the side and and look at you. Two of their arms crossed and the other two propped on their hips. They smile casually down at you. Zainan Ash, what a pleasure to see you again. Admiral, uh, quite a treat that you're here. I thought you'd be 
out there still. Ah, yes, I suppose I neglected to mention that I'd be here, of course, for the ceremonial farewell banquet for the Tournament of Heirs, as befits my station as Admiral. Of course, uh, well, it's good to see you. You look, uh, well, you clean up nicely. Hmm. It's good to see you as well. And all six of their eyes appraise you, looking at the, you know, the multi-layered jacket and tunic that you have on. I've never seen that style of robe before. It's lovely. It looks like it belongs on you. Thank you. Uh, how's it out there? Ah, it is how it is. We've sent a contingent of scouts to investigate that trail of oil slick destruction, but let's not talk business while we're here. Have I introduced you to my wife yet? I don't believe. So this is Lady Okami. And they hold out two of their arms and stepping into view is a gorgeous woman. Tall, curvy, light brown skin with long wavy snow white hair that touches her lower back. She wears a simple but elegant black dress with a dangerous slit of one thigh and her neck glimmers with jewels. She smiles at you, Zainan, with razor sharp teeth and you notice that her painted nails are razor sharp as well. And next to her is a pin wolf a uh, pure white pinwolf with crimson eyes and two tails with a jeweled collar. Please, my friends call me Lady Ruka. You must be Zainan, I've heard so much about you. Charmed. And she Pleasure. holds out a hand for you to kiss. And Zainan is already holding a hand out, like scoops it easily and leans in with a very gentlemanly kiss and a somewhat crooked grin back up at her. I've heard so many interesting things about you, Zainan, from my beloved spouse. I wonder if half of those stories are true. Well, you know, the Wild Sea is an interesting place. Hmm, indeed it is. I see what you meant by him, darling. He is quite a specimen. And, uh, I can't say that I have heard too much about you, but it's a shame because you are as lovely as is befitting your spouse. <laughs> oh, you flatter me. Darling, you were right. He is a flatterer. I like you. You're a wild mm. sailor, yes? I am indeed. Hmm. I am not myself, but my services help the Navy and other wild sailors who are in need of well-trained, loyal, vicious pinwolves. Like your friend here. Yes, Mrs. Frost. Sit. And Frost immediately sits. <laughs> Zainan straightens up a little when she says that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Admiral <laughs> cocks their head to the side regarding the dynamic between you and their wife. Uh, and the Admiral says, I'm gonna be here for a couple of days after the banquet before going back out to my fleet down north. I believe that my wife is quite interested in getting to know you better, Zainan. I would uh, be eager to see your work, ma'am, and uh, get to know you a little better as well, both of you. Hmm, likewise. <laughs> I'm always looking for more animals to break in. Zainan looks at, at Sam, just kind of like at the side of his eyes, and he is hiding just the biggest grin possible as he looks down to the ground <laughs> yep uh <laughs> i think shuffling up a little bit bringing a very well made but rather old and worn hat between their fingers a bit is castell castell approaches the three of you 
uh, not wanting to intrude on this conversation, but the Admiral and their wife notice this approach and they kind of open up this like uh, circle to admit Castell. And the Admiral says, oh, Miss Aguilar, how are the Triforidons? Ah, they're, uh, they're doing just well, Admiral. Thank you for asking. I was wondering if I could uh, steal Zanin for a little bit. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, do you mind? There's something I wanted to, uh, talk to you about. Uh, Admiral, um, uh, Lady Akami. And this, these two spouses kind of bow and nod politely, right? Lady Okami like nods uh, in a friendly manner toward Castell. Seems like all of them know each other, at least on very friendly business terms. And right before you go off to wherever Castell is bringing you to, uh, the Admiral rests one of their hands on your shoulder for like a quick word before you go off. Zainan. Yeah? Be careful, will you? Right. What I mean is, not everyone approaches intimacy as a beautiful robe you can slip on or off. Some people take it rather seriously. Ah. Thanks. They're, I'll, uh, find yeah, their later. top two eyes flick over at Castell as they say that. As they say that, just be intentional about the choices you make. Yes. I will, Admiral. They lift a hand from your shoulder and let you go. Castell leads you out of the immediate banquet hall, out of one of the open doors. You can still see the banquet from the gardens just beyond, uh, so you're not out of sight of the rest of your party. And they kind of take you to a nice isolated little rose garden that has a, a bit of a pavilion and some benches for you to sit down on. Yeah, okay. Do you, you follow? Okay, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> Yep, Castell sits on a stone bench. There are roses all around. It smells beautiful. And the evening is fully here. The twin moons high in the sky, right? Plumes of purple and pink light streaking through the cosmos above your head. Everything smelling like honeysuckle and nectar. And Castell turns to you, still wringing that hat a little bit between their fingers. They've dressed up as much as Castell, you know, could dress up for an event such as this. Hair still in that shaggy brown mullet, but with a comb run through it a little haphazardly a bit. So like the hair is not in her eyes fully. And she's got uh, a nice leather vest on and nice collared tunic tucked into these like brown trousers and the same muddy work boots as always. I, uh... Hope I didn't drag you out of a particularly enticing conversation. I know everyone's quite eager to talk to the Admiral for one reason or another. Yeah, it was, uh, we made acquaintance out on the sea. It was nice to catch up with them. Uh, what can I do for you, Castell? I see. Ah, yes. Well, I, uh, forgive me if I come across as a little, uh, forward, but... I felt a genuine connection with you, Zynan. A real one. I'm... I don't usually... I'm more comfortable with birds than most people, you see, so... That's a lot coming from me. I'd like to see you again. In a real way. If you'll have me. Uh... Listen, Castell, this is, uh... I... I also very often make better acquaintance with birds than people uh which is probably why i'm a bit tongue-tied but uh i don't think i'm gonna be in raya long oh but you'll come back yes if i'm able but i'm i am actually on a somewhat dangerous mission <laughs> uh not to uh i don't want to I hope I didn't mislead you. No, I mean, dangerous mission or not, I, I I understand. I mean, I am a Triforidon trainer. These birds can go miles, miles, miles an hour. Wherever you are, as long as you're not on the other side of the Wild Sea, I, I'd like to see you again. Oh, uh... The distance is no object. I can wait. 
Because still, I, uh, I also felt a genuine connection. But I'll... And Zainan stops. He has been kind of mulling over the same five words in this conversation since he sat down. And he looks into eyes that seem very familiar, more familiar than even before they met. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not someone you want to be with. Not really. What do you... Zainan, we've all got skeletons in our closets. No, I burn down I'm relationships. I burn them down. That doesn't scare me. I've been through my fair share of tumultuous partnerships, Zainan. But you and me, I... Look, I don't mean to be presumptuous, but... I assume we're similar in age, and... I'm sick of... Flings. Of... of things that are just shallow of things that don't mean anything. I, I'd i like to settle down someday. And I'm not saying that that person's going to be you. Again, I don't mean to be presumptuous, but... Real intimacy, Zion, and something... something real. Someone that I can... share a ride on the back of one of my birds with. Someone I can... I don't know, have a nice life with. Isn't that something you want? Isn't that worth fighting for? Even if it's not with me, but for you. Looking into Castell's eyes, Zainan hears the flippant comment from Sahem on the ship. Hears the words of Naim. And the last thing he thinks of is Azalis. The smell of Dom cooking the shape of home. And he looks Castell in the eye, sets his jaw. Castell, I can't. Because I can't love you. And that's what you deserve. I'm sorry. I see. You know, uh, I thought you were different. I thought you would at least be someone who would shoot straight and not do the whole, it's not you, it's me thing. No, I'm... No, no, I'm no, I, I understand. I... I understand now. Castell, you... You have a good evening, Zainan. No. And Castell stands up, puts their hat on their head, gives you a curt nod, goes Castell... off into the darkness of the gardens. They're gone. And Zainan just sits there, puts his head in his hands, forgets that he is on a mission, forgets that he should be worried about the princess, the prin, the rest of Nova. He just sits there in the garden and listens to the wind. Lumira! Sing has, if you'll allow her, <laughs> taken your hand and tried to lead you to the dance floor. Of course. Yeah, I'll follow wherever she goes. Yep, you follow her hand, you follow her lead, right? She walks backward with like a big glimmering smile on her face and to, you know, the jaunty, jubilant, elegant, uh songs and music and soundscape that the band is weaving the two of you begin to dance and you're not the only couples out on the dance floor right uh swaying your bodies in tandem and in rhythm with each other and even as sings dancing with you though lumira you know her well enough to see a kind of heaviness weighing down the smile like the smile that she has on her face is taking a lot of effort for her to put on instead of just enjoying the moment with you there's something dark and heavy on her mind as she dances with you. What's going on? <laughs> what do you mean? 
you might be able to fool a lot of people here. I am not one of them. So again, I'm gonna ask you, what is wrong? And that smile falls as she lets that true emotion behind it through. And you see a knotted brow, you see worry, frustration. There's anger there. There's also sadness, irritation, and desperation just a little bit. Lumira, I'm sorry. I, I really wanted this night to be good and to not think about just all this shit that's just... It's here. We, we got in a fight while we were getting ready for the banquet and I just, it's just hard for me to shake. So he did the typical Sayer thing. <laughs> yeah, I guess he did do the typical Sayer thing, which I don't even like saying. And I'm always the one who talks back to people who say that and I, uh doesn't make it any less of a fact. We care about him, but he... tends to hurt more than he wants to. You're telling me. I know you understand this probably the most out of anyone about him aside from myself. It's just... I don't even know if you remember this, Lumira, but back on Storm Chaser, before we went up and came here to the Raya, I said that thing about not even like noticing how around. close. Makes yeah, she's sense. spinning. <laughs> she's spinning as she's talking very seriously to you. <laughs> I said that thing about not even noticing, right? Like how close he and Abasi were getting to each other, but that wasn't true. That was a lie. O obviously, I noticed. Obviously, I saw. I, I guess I was just, I don't know. I've always been the one. The Sayer's the closest to, you know, ever since we were kids. And he's always been the one that I'm the closest to. And I'm just scared of losing that. And I don't even know why I'm losing that right now. It just feels like he's mad at me for things that I, that's not even in my control, which is super ironic coming from him of all people, or for things that weren't a problem before that I didn't even know was a problem or for things that I do because I'm trying to protect him. Same, same. And I think Lumira takes this time to like dip her. <laughs> Is Sayer your brother or not? You know the answer to that question. And she comes back up as you undip her. We. And Lumira kind of even falters for a bit mid-dance as she's trying to formulate the words. Sayer does not... I have my own problems with him right now. I'm trying not to let them cloud what I'm about to say. He cares about you and you care about him. But at the same time, you two are two totally different people. I cannot articulate that enough. Maybe there's a point in time where the twins have to find what works for the twins, sans and separate from the other. That doesn't negate what you feel for him or what he feels for you or make anything any less than what it already is. All it is is two people who came into the world together are now adults. And they have to move accordingly. That's all. I know, I know. And thank you for saying that, Lumira. It's just... I want him to make friends. That's not even the problem. And I'm happy for him, but I'd be lying to myself if it wasn't <clears throat> nerve wracking to think that someone else out there could be closer to him than I am. And it's not even, it is about that, but more than that, it's we came into this world together. 
for better, for worse, but together. And everyone has always said that, you know, I'm the chosen one and Sayer's just kind of there, right? And that's what everyone says, but Lumira, deep down, there's a part of me that knows that's not true. That it's not just me, the chosen one, and Sayer who's whatever. It's, it's, we're better together than we are apart. Fate made me, fate doesn't make mistakes. She made both of us for a reason. And that reason is good. I'm the chosen one. He's not just my shadow. He's my brother and I love him. And I want him to be the him that he's always meant to be, but it's just so hard sometimes. I think you hit it right on the head. Fate chose you. They don't make mistakes. Just like fate gave you your mission, fate will give Sayir his as well. You really think so? I know so. <laughs> Trust in her <laughs> will, right? Trust in her will, yeah. But in her will we trust. You have to have faith in that. She doesn't steer us wrong. You're right. You're right, Lumira. You're right. <laughs> God, I'm sorry for just dumping this on you. I wanted this to be a nice night between the two of us. And I know you have your own things going on and we're on a mission and everything. It's just, sometimes it just feels like you're the only person I feel like I can be myself around, aside from Seer. You and Sayer are the people I have known the longest. You're the only people that I've known, truly. So when I say I get it, I get it. But tonight, right now, no more talk of Sayer, no more talk of this. Right. And we will right. enjoy our night together. Right. Sound good? As sounds perfect. Enjoy our night together as not just friends. And Sing now kind of spins you, right? Gives you a nice twirl as the song comes to an end, like a nice kind of jubilant song. And then a next song bleeds in and it's kind of, it's a slow dance song. It's a romantic one. It's nice and slow. Other couples nearby start like swaying, right? Trios start swaying, groups of people start swaying together. Uh, and Sing as she, you know, finishes twirling you and brings you back to her. Like the two of you are suddenly rather close again. And you feel Sing's hand like slide to the small of your back. She starts to pull you in for a closer dance. Lumira's breath hitches like so subtly. And she's like doing that thing where like she gets real tense and then let's like is like reminding herself like, nope, don't. Don't be tense, don't be tense, relax, relax. Don't, don't be weird, don't be suspicious. Don't be weird, <laughs> don't be suspicious. <laughs> uh, Sing pulls you in, right? Your hips, I think, are pressed together, right? You're so close next to each other, right? She holds you out for like a slow waltz. And as she does her eyes, those like brilliant, beautiful pink eyes, boring into yours, they're all you can see. And you hear her say in a low, very genuine voice, you know, I'm so used to playing the perfect chosen one, but being everything that everyone at trans wants me to be. But when I'm with you, Lumira, I can really just be me. There is no one in this multiverse or the next that I can be myself with either. Sing starts to lean in. Do you start to also yeah, lean in? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It's like that. Uh, 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 uh huh, uh huh. You start to lean in, and right before your lips meet, Sing freezes, and a darkness comes over her face. Wait, wait, something's wrong. Sayer! 
where do we find you in the banquet hall as Nova splits off? Why would you, why would you transition like that, Connie? Answer um, me, Val. Sayer is with Abasi. And I think they both have the same pose with their arms crossed, looking at different parts of uh, the banquet hall. Sayer was at first trailing around looking for the print when that failed to distract him long enough. His striking blue eyes lingered on seeing in the mirror when he felt his heart sink a little too much watching how happy they are, how easy it is, how freeing it is. He snaps over to look at where Zainan left. And he kind of stares out the door, looking forlornly like a pin wolf waiting for its next command. And I think he kind of like looks over to Abasi as his eyes linger back to the dad and just leans over and is like, you're not going to say hi to your old man? Abasi has a very similar look on her face to you. It's like the two of you just kind of pouting and skulking on the sidelines <laughs> of the banquet hall. Yeah. I think suitors for Abasi have come up to the two of you, but she's just glared at them so hard that they've just like turned and left mm -hmm. without saying anything, right? And like you standing there mm -hmm. like a mean looking guard dog as well, right? You're like two Dobermans, just like, yeah. <laughs> uh, no one approaches. Um, as you say that, Abasi, arms crossed, you know, kind of scowls off to the side, her eyes looking a little fretfully, sorrowfully, desperately, resignedly over at her father, who's still surrounded by tons of attendants and has not made his way over to his daughter. Yeah, I, uh, obviously I wanted to go over to my father and say hello and say, hey, it's me, remember? Your daughter, you know, your flesh and blood. <sighs> but I've, I've decided, you know what? Up until the banquet, up until the print gives a signal, uh, he's gonna have to come to me. Mm-hmm. Alright, I think, I think that's sound, just in case anything pops off before then. then oh, but god damn it! I just... I just want to go up to him and, and, and give him a hug because I'm scared for him, and I... This is just a lot, Sayer. I get it. I... Like, I'm angry at him, but I know it's not his fault, but I can't help but feel like it's his fault, too, and I... You know how that feels? Sayer snorts, uh, and then his gaze lifts up, at the exact moment where Lumira dips sing during the dance. Uh huh. And he says, Yeah, yeah, I know how that feels. And it's like a part of me, a really selfish, wrong, I know, part of me, but still it's there, thinks that if he just, if he just loved me more than whatever this oil curse is, he'd be able to fight it off. And I know that's not fair. I know that's not what it is, but I can't help but feel that way. Sometimes the darkness is hard to shake off. It's not that they want to be in it. It's just always there, you know? Your, your, your father's going to be okay. We're here now. This plan is going to work. Okay. Thanks, Sayer. It needs to work. It's gonna work. Yeah. You know, but enough about me pouting. You should be... Uh, she kind of lets out a sad meh noise as she sees you looking at Lumira <laughs> and Sing dancing. <laughs> I'm not used to parties. Right. I'm super used to parties, you know, growing up royal, tons of sorees here all the time, yeah. you know, beautiful women mm -hmm. around me constantly of wanting course. to marry me. But, um, yeah, 
I've the never longer really you look been... at those curtains, Armageddon's not going to pop up. You know that, right? What? What? Hey, that's not what I was thinking at all. Okay, for the record, if I were mm -hmm. wanting Armageddon to pop up behind those curtains, it would be so I could kick her ass in front of all these people. You know, for embarrassing me, standing me up. Now I know it probably wasn't her fault. She is on like a monk ship or something. But why is she on a monk ship and not here? Like, is a monk ship seriously more interesting than me? I, I at least have the personality above that of a ugly sailing vessel, right? Obasi. What? There's a lot of things you learn being a... Uh... A fly on the wall, a shadow in a room. You you can tell the rest of these folks that you're a nemesis, that you're gonna kick her ass. You can't fool me. We sparred together, that was your mistake. <sighs> now I know you too well. Oh yeah? Okay, well we could take this outside, Mr. We Spar Together. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know what? Just, you, I'm gonna get a drink. What do you want? <laughs> uh, I really like the thing that we had after training, that really minty, um, cold thing. Oh, the minty cold bomb. Called. It's called minty cold bomb. Oh, yeah, I'd like that. That sounds fun. Excellent! Okay, two shots of minty cold bomb coming right up. I'll be right back. You stay right here. Alright, I'm not moving. Alright. Okay, Abasi out. And Abasi yeah. turns and goes off to like a, a drink table, <laughs> leaving you alone for like a, a brief moment of time, Sayer. And as you're standing there just by yourself, looking at your crush, uh, your crush, dancing with your sister, uh, um, <laughs> by yourself yeah. standing there, it's just you, yourself, and your shadow. And your shadow. And you hear a voice whisper up from your shadow, in a tone only you can hear. Uh, Sayer? Mm. It's me, down here, being huh. Hi. Uh, Sayer glances down, uh, and I think he sees, like, the movement of the shadow. Uh, and he kind of, like, I imagine he's close to a table, but he's maneuvered closer to the wall in the window now, mm -hmm. just so folks don't notice him talking to himself uh mm -hmm. he already looks odd he doesn't need to look odder uh and he leans down he's like hey sorry i know it's been an evening Hard to hey chat it's fine totally fine i i've been watching you know like i said keeping an eye on you and i uh i know you've been gearing up for this banquet that's happening right now you know this dance ball and mm -hmm. and i noticed you know abasi's gone off now to get your shot and I, I was just wondering i know you don't have anyone to dance with so i thought maybe we could dance together i i picked out oh. an outfit uh i'm wearing something that i've never really worn before i've never been to a ball or a dance or a banquet or any kind of feast of any kind no one's ever invited me before you know because monster and all that. I've never gone with a friend or had a friend before. This is all new to me, but I would really like to dance with you. you you've never been invited to a party before? No. No, I haven't. But you're beautiful. Uh, uh, th thanks. You're beautiful too. Sayer's brain short circuits? I don't think he's heard a compliment like that before. Uh, and he kind of just like looks inquisitively over at the shadow at Ying He and he just says, Th thanks. Uh, uh, and color comes to his face. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd like to dance with you, but um, one, I'm a real, I'm a real shit dancer. Uh, I don't, that's Sing's bag usually. Uh, but, but how? I can travel between planes by stepping through shadows. So I could step through your shadow and I could be there. He, he and Sayer. 
Yes. So you do know that keeping in contact, obviously, with someone from a previous mission beyond the mission violates Code 31, Section B of the Trans Handbook, endangering the fabric of the multiverse and your strike team's mission. You know this. Regardless, do you accept Yinko's invitation to dance, or do you turn him down? We're leaving it up to the dice. <laughs> okay. The dice has spoken. Uh, and I think Sayer doesn't say anything, but as the shadow ripples and maybe a part of Ying He appears, like a hand, Sayer just lifts Ying He up. Like yeah, it's instinct. you lift... Mm -hmm. A hand does come out of the shadow on the ground and you lift Ying He out of this pool of darkness and you see, well, the monster of the moon Kiss temple still kind of light starved with this like dark hair, these bright silvery eyes, right? All angles and awkward uh, musculature and jawline, but there's something uh, more colorful about them as well, something a bit more lively. It's the fact that they have a friend, they have few. And as their like dark hair kind of falls in their face and they rise up out of this pool of darkness, you see that they're wearing a really nice robe, all things considered. It looks like it's been woven from strands of liquid moonlight. It looks like a god gave them these robes. Uh, they just drape in a kind of glowing fashion across their lithe form and down onto the ground. They're not wearing shoes. Oh, uh, hi. Hi. Your uh, outfit hi. matches your eyes. Your outfit matches your eyes. Sayer, so uh, I think, takes a look around guard dog mode has been activated and he just loosens off his belt, his sash and uh, instead of it holding up his weapons he just tucks his weapons on a uh, belt on his back uh, and he just drapes it over Ying He's head Strike Team Nova know what you look like this is to oh. protect you. Oh, are they not supposed to know I'm here? The lisp. And you see, and you see, Sayer like hesitate. It's one of those things where you're going to have questions, and I want to answer you, but I can't. Just the less you know, the more I can protect you. Okay. Oh, okay. I know that that was one of the rules you established about our friendship. So, okay, yeah, I, I won't ask anything. Uh, and he kind of like tries to drape this uh, veil over mm -hmm. Ying her properly. Uh, and he goes, I'm Almost sorry, like a bridal cause... veil, right? So like it obscures mm -hmm. their face. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and Sayer... Uh, tries to tuck it and he just says this completely clashes with everything i'm sorry no no it's okay i hold on and they sweep their hands down across their robe and like the silver turns to like a bright glowing crimson <laughs> magically all the way down right the tresses of their dress bleed into the shadow that they cast behind them and their shadow turns red as well right i'm still getting used to this whole uh, god power thing that's okay. I'm still trying to figure out he gestures to the entirety of himself. Uh, and I think he looks over to see where Abasi is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and in quick indication that he's never been at a fucking party before, Sayer uh, puts his fingers to his lips uh, 
and whistles over to a bossy using uh i think a whistle that he just learned from being amongst the sky warriors <laughs> Uh, everyone in your vicinity turns to look at you, and every Sky Warrior in the area turns to look at you, even if they're not near you. <laughs> and Abasi was at the table, like, holding these two shots, talking to, like, several suitors at once, and turns sharply to look at you. Uh, and he just, like, raises, like, uh, a sign to say that he's heading to the dance floor, but he'll stay close to the uh table so just he doesn't want a bossy to just hang around waiting for him and he's sure. just fucked off somewhere <laughs> they're friends he's nicer than that sure you go to the dance floor after whistling everyone who's staring at you some people look rather affronted you know and you hear someone go there is a band you know uh but as you as you hit the dance floor with ying he and toe people start like looking away from you again the sky warriors like Relax. Because I think the whistle was for like someone in distress. Yeah. <laughs> so like you know, Not they're, they're at now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you hit the dance floor. And it's at that exact moment that Sing kind of paused uh mid-moment with Lumira. And like this nice slow waltz also winds down to a stop as soon as Sayer and Ying He step onto the dance floor. As Sing is saying yet again, something's wrong. Um, and she steps away from you, Lumira, and casts a now worried pink look across this dance floor, and her eyes fall on Sayer, who has just walked on uh, onto the tiles. Sayer! Uh, and her, yeah, her brows furrow seeing Ying He, uh, face covered. Sayer, I need you to make a roll to see how well you've disguised Ying He. So that's gonna be Instinct, Sharps, or Veils. We're gonna go with it. We're gonna go with instinct. Okay. Uh, and what? Oh, yeah. What skill? Out, I mean, outwit is the one, right? Yup. I'm gonna need you to roll outwit, and I'm gonna cut two because Ying He, uh, their shadow keeps wobbling on the ground behind them. They're not very conspicuous now that they're bright crimson, and they keep like tugging at the veil, like it's kind of scratchy and uncomfortable on their face. Oh, Connie. I love that you said that because I'm going to use guide my hands because this okay. is a bond between two people who are exactly alike in the same monstrous way and he is not paying attention to the world right now. All that matters is Ying He in front of him. So I will gain two ranks in my skills in that for that duration. I will now mark that trait. Okay, go so for it. I, I now have four d six. We cut two. Yep, cutting the top two. All right, go for it. Yep. Guys, please. oh hell yeah! Okay, Bow. so the, the six <laughs> is gone. The six is gone. The okay. five is gone, leaving a uh, five and a three. <laughs> So that's a conflict, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Because we cut two, we don't get that twist. So that is a, a success with a drawback. So mm -hmm. you successfully disguise that this is Ying He. The drawback, I think. <sighs> oh no. Now, <laughs> now, I think it would be really interesting if, hold on. Uh, oh no. Uh, 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 okay, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. <clears throat> There's a, a frozen moment as Singh stands there, turns, looks, sees this Ying He question mark, sees you. Lumira also pauses, turns, looks, sees the two of you. As Singh just goes, I, who's that? Uh, that doesn't matter. There's something seriously wrong. The print isn't even here yet. We need to get Zainan. We need to get a bossy wherever she is because I just have, I don't know. I got this really weird feeling and the Northern doors of the banquet hall fly open. Standing at the threshold is an eight foot tall woman with light brown skin, broad shoulders, built like a reef iron warship. And yet she wears what would be a beautiful suit if not for the myriad rips and stains, a sleek black jacket, tailored trousers, polished shoes, and a white collared tunic. 
unbuttoned all the way down to her navel, revealing a chest and abdomen of hardened muscle with two thick ropes of top surgery scars. Her hair is black and shaggy, but gelled up and out of her face with a kind of polished grace. She looks like a wild lion that's had a comb run through its mane and a suit placed over its deadly form. Her eyes are red, pure, shining, crimson like chips of arterial blood. Her jaw is hard, masculine. Her nose looks like it's been broken twice and welded back together by a doctor who cared more about efficiency than painlessness. The woman carries a person over one shoulder like a sacrifice, <gasps> like they weigh nothing. And that um. person is Prin Him Soo Hyun, limp and unconscious. Behind this woman is light, hot and wavering light, silhouetting her entrance like a sunrise. No, not light, fire. Blood red, hungry fire, burning the Raya to the ground. A smile cracks open the woman's features like the jagged edge of a broken blade. She points with one massive hand toward the shocked crowd in this banquet hall as a single tongue of flame licks up her forearms and she booms in a voice like roaring fire. Abbasi Zahar, scion of body, you're coming with me. Let's dance, baby! And we're gonna end the session there. Uh, no! So thank you all so much for tuning into the midpoint episode no! of the Chaos no! Medical on Translator no! RPG. No. I have been your GM and creative producer, Connie Chow, my pronouncer. Thank you, and she can find me across the internet at by Connie Chow, TikTok, and Twitter. Go ahead, take it, pal. Yet again, I am a victim to Connie's midpoint con like cliffhanger. Hello, everybody. My name is Valiant. Yes, I will make that choice, Dorian. And I use he, him, his pronouns. You can find me all around the internet at Valiant Dorian on also Spirit Bear. Please enjoy that lovely treasure hunt that I just set you on. And tonight I played your questionable decision making, Miss Beloved Twin, Seir, who uses he, they pronouns. And I'm going to pass out your doctors over to Kai. Uh, Kai's not here right now. Please leave a message at the tone. Hello? Beep. Um, I'm Kai. I use he, they, and she pronouns. I'm utterly bewildered. Um, uh, I have had such a delightful time playing the shockingly honest Zynan Esh this evening. I don't even know. Uh, you can find me everywhere as Estelle of Imladris, and I'll be back screaming, uh, here very soon. Uh, here you go, Sam. This one's for you. Ha, ha, hi, I'm Sam Star. Yeah, that's right, Sam Star. Hi, I'm Sam Star. I use she, they, and the occasional fade pronouns. Um, and I'm hurt. Uh, I also played Lumira, who uses she, her pronouns. You can find me across the internet at Lust for Life X. And uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to the evil boss. It's me, to the close evil boss. Out. I'm going to slash your wages. Uh, the evil boss. Uh, uh, you heard it here first, folks. We're going to be raiding someone really awesome right now. No doubt. Use the raid message in chat. Don't forget to sign up for our live show if you're going to go to Big Bad Con. Uh, use exclamation point Big Bad in chat. Snag those seats. It does not count towards your quota. If you're holding on to slots for events that you want to go to. Um, we're going to be here again next week. It's going to be some kind of fiery fight. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. It's going to be awesome. I promise you a hot villain. I deliver.
I literally hot. So who knows? Uh, so we'll see you next Saturday at 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. Thank you to everyone who's donated so far to help us get the big bad. Uh, and congratulations to the winners of our giveaways tonight. Tune in again next week for more in chat giveaways and more incentives toward hitting our goal to get to big bad. We love you all so much. Use the raid message in chat and Bijou, Bijou.